I was just worried about driving here because like Aaron already knows I'm not the best driver in the world. <laughs> Although I've got him comfortable uh, now. No, he's only done one time he almost died. But what do you yeah. mean? Uh, in San Francisco? <laughs> okay, that's the story for the podcast. I'll, I'll wait. Welcome to another episode of The Third Wheel. I'm one of your hosts, Hamish. And I'm your other host, Aaron. And today we're joined by one of Aaron's San Francisco colleagues on the SVIP program, Deja. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Deja. I'm 26 and I'm a product manager in San Francisco. Yeah, me and Deja both met each other. Do you remember when we first met each other? So we both got through on the SVIP program, which we'll probably go through in a bit. I remember seeing you at the airport. That was probably the first time. Yeah, because we're all awkwardly looking at each other like, is that you? Is that you? Yeah, it was, um, (laughs) was it just for like customs? Yeah, that really long. Yeah, so it's really long customs queue, like when getting into San Francisco. And um, yeah, I, I, because I knew kind of what everyone kind of looked like, just from like stalking you guys. (laughs) Because all we had to to, like go by was emails, I think. And Facebook, right? Were we friends on Facebook? I think there was a group before we got there. Oh, was it? But we were, none of us were like friends, but there was a little group before we got there. Okay, maybe. Yeah. So I knew like faces and I was like, oh yeah, I can see that. I think that's Jack. I think that's, I know you, Maria and Abby, Abby were like together. together. Yeah. So we got through on the program called, well, we both applied for a program called the SVIP, which is called the Silicon Valley Internship Program, which is basically gives engineers or in software engineer graduates um, from UK universities. Well, at the time it was UK universities. Now it's expanded, I believe. Just for girls, I think. Oh, only for girls? Yeah, so guys women in still tech UK. or girls in tech. Okay. One of those. So graduates from like UK universities and brings them over to San Francisco Bay Area for a year to work at a startup or a company. It's kind of like a middleman kind of thing, I think, process. Yeah. It's not like they place you in that company. You have to still apply for... You apply for the program and then you get vetted, kind of have to do like a few tests to actually get through the program. And then your application is put in front of loads of different companies in the San Francisco Bay Area or who have a, who have partnered with the SVIP. And then those companies can like choose to interview you and yeah, you go through all that process. Yeah. How did you find the SVIP? Um, I thought it was really fun. I'm still in San Francisco now, even though the year's up. I love San Francisco. It's a really interesting place, but I've been back here for like two months and I'm like, oh my gosh, I really miss the UK. So um, it has its pros and cons being away from home. Yeah, definitely. Like I, so I returned back. Why? <laughs> it's partly, so like, you know, I, I found my job pretty tough at the beginning. Wasn't necessarily enjoying it as much as I thought. I would or should. That was one factor. I also just wanted a bit of a break, like to come back and just take a bit of a break. I didn't want to like stay in San Francisco and take a break and do nothing. I thought I I could do that here. And just like missing like friends and family kind of thing, to be honest. It's just really different culturally. Yeah. yeah, Like you've been to visit as well. Like it's just, I don't know what it is. Even the other day I went into Tesco and I was like, I really miss the food here. (laughs) (laughs) And I think it's just like the cultural difference is just, even though they do speak English. It's just really big and really different. And like, there's just little things that you just forget about that you miss. Mm -hmm. Like even just, I don't know, being here and just being able to walk around so undetected because like people don't hear me speak and they're like, oh, you're from the UK or Mm. are you from Australia? I get that a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, are you? No. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) But um, yeah, I just miss like just so many little things and just even just conversations that you have with people here as well. It's just really different. How, how so would you find it different? Because in America, I found that everyone was always super, super nice. Oh yeah. The people are really friendly and like really great. But even if you're like stressed out looking for something, some words that we use, they don't understand. So like I'd ask people, Hey, where's the car park? And they're like, what does that even mean? And then, um, <laughs> what's the words that parking lot car- over park- there? Yeah. Parking lot. And I had this whole conversation for like, eight minutes with this woman about trying to find a car park for a car I booked and she just didn't understand what I was saying and I was like I was so annoyed and so confused (laughs) and I was like why don't you understand me and um, then it hit me I was like oh it's parking lot here and just even like didn't you have one with like queue as well yeah I was (laughs) was near the beginning of the year I think (laughs) what is that called in America line yeah just a line so they don't understand the word queue. And then being in San Francisco as well, like most people are engineers. So they see that as a data structure. So it's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> so that was really awkward. And I was like, are you in the queue? And he's like, like the data structure I was like, no, like 
the cue? And he's like, you mean the line? And I was like, oh, it's the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I said it once in the past. I made a mistake with chips. So we were on this terrace bar somewhere. I don't mm. know if you remember the place. Oh, yeah, we were. I took them to uh, El Techo. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. The like rooftop bar in San Francisco. Yeah, so I was, I was hungry and I had forgotten. It was like my second or third day there. And I'd forgotten that they call crisp chips. Uh, so I basically, I was like chips and salsa. Who does that? I ordered it <laughs> without thinking. <laughs> I got it and I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was just like, no. Yeah. That distinction there, like that shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. yeah that takes some getting used to, but I don't, I don't think I really experienced that too much. Like words that they just couldn't. I was saying and they couldn't understand. But It'd be more like American London slang kind of thing. Yeah. I lived with Americans as well. So even like things yeah, like that, it, was, it yeah. was. Yeah. So me and Deja didn't actually live together in San Francisco. That's, <laughs> I don't know if you actually want to get into that. But um, <laughs> yeah, we had the SVIP house, which there were seven of us in the SVIP co- cohort for that year. And it was a six bedroom house. So Deja unfortunately didn't live with us. The internship is one year and it's paid. For us, I think it's now it's gone now gone up to like eighty five. This year, yeah. yeah, and we were on, yeah, like sixty six. Yeah. So, which is for San Francisco, it's poor. not. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. It's pretty poor, even though Mass signed like a lot. And if for like, I don't know what's like the average engine, average salary for like a software engineer in San Francisco. I want to say one hundred twenty thousand, but between that, between one hundred twenty thousand, one hundred fifty. Yeah. Say. so we're on like you're literally on like half or we were on half but i never found it too much of a problem like we were paying quite a rent was quite a lot but it was it was never like i was struggling or felt like i was struggling same actually i think even living in london before that and paying like significantly less in rent i don't i felt like i was a little bit more reckless with my money last year to be honest and like just buying things that i didn't need and just you know like experiencing because like you're somewhere new yeah, yeah so um i didn't actually think it was that bad but um, it's funny because i was on this like oakland meme page on instagram the other day and it was like if you earn between 60 to 80k in the bay area i think you're poor <laughs> 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 and i was like oh well i didn't find it that bad but i guess like i had a good rent situation and it was cheaper than the house as well yeah i didn't really feel like i was struggling that much so did you live alone or was it with like other people? So I live with other people and it's like really normal there to have like a partitioned off living room. Mm-hmm. So um, part of my living room was partitioned off to another room. And then we had like a small living room and then there's like two rooms in the master bedroom. But like the apartment itself is like lovely. There's really nice roof and gym and everything. Yeah, like everywhere does that bullshit partition, which is a bit frustrating, but mm-hmm. it is what it is. The, the SVIP program as well was also meant to... Um, I think the idea behind it was that you'd go work in San Francisco for a year in Silicon Valley and like pick up a load of like entrepreneurial skills from the Bay Area and then bring that back to England and kind of like start your own kind of company or like business or whatever. With the program, a lot of us kind of expected to kind of be handheld a little bit in terms of starting Mm. your own business. But um, there were a few opportunities I had when I was like on, you know, the app Sharper? Uh, The app. Shopper. Yeah, S H A P R. No. So it's like it's a bit Tinderish for like business people, and I think they've got it here too. And you can like look for like jobs on there or mentors or co-founders. So I was using that for a bit when I first got there, just to like meet other people that do what I do. And like, I'm really big on like having a mentor in my career, just somebody that's like kind of walked that path already and helps you not make the same stupid mistakes. And I met this one guy, he was like a serial entrepreneur and we used to have coffee quite often. And like, he would talk to me about his business ventures quite a bit. So I feel like I could have done more with that opportunity. But then at the same time, when you have engineering experience or skills, people tend to want to exploit you. So he wanted me to do some free work and I was like, I couldn't really work on my current visa and um, I didn't want to work for free. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, not for something I don't believe in. Yeah, yeah. especially in a place like San Francisco. Yeah. Where you literally can't, like, you're poor on 60K. You're, like, yeah. You're not working for money. It's not going to work out. Yeah, I think I learned, like, so I was in a very different position to, like, most other people in our year, whereas that I was, like, a four-man startup. So I guess I was exposed to like all areas of the business, 
which was like had its like pros and cons. Like I was able to tra uh, travel to New York like quite a lot, but then also like I was working like really long hours and it was like quite demanding. I think one of the big things from like San Francisco and Silicon Valley in that area is just kind of the networking. Mm. I think that's I, that's probably one of my regrets. I probably didn't network enough, but I think that's maybe like the biggest part of going there. Yeah. For, like someone of us in tech. Did you go to like many like kind of like meetups and stuff like that? Mm, not too many. My friends actually spoke at one. So I went to see that at Slack and that was really fun. I've been to Pinterest a few times to do networking events, but they would have all these tech talks and then they would have things like how to pick a lock and how to make bath bombs. And um, that- at Pinterest? <laughs> yeah oh i think i remember you like yeah telling us yeah about this. and that and was just way more fun than like the talk so i'd like go to pinterest like yeah i'm gonna like network and then i'd be like learning how to pick a lock or make bath bombs or whatever quirky thing that they had there but um yeah that was they're the two best ones i went to we went to the monzo thing actually yeah i went to monzo's us launch like towards the end of yeah. my time there anyway but that was just like a standard talk got like a t-shirt it's, well, we, it wasn't interesting because we knew all of it already. Yeah. Like they were just trying to introduce the US like base to like Monzo. And was this like August 2019? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But like a lot of like a lot of the meetups, the good thing was that they just gave like free food and drink. Yeah. That's one of the main. I, I think Johnny used to go to like <laughs> one almost every day just so he didn't have to buy dinner, which is, <laughs> is, a, is a good tactic to be fair. Oh, that's actually interesting. That's yeah. quite a small one. Wait, how much was like rent there? Or like average rent there? Depending on where, I guess it depended where you live as well. If it was like Bayside or near where Aaron lived, which was Bernal Heights. Yeah. Yeah. So we paid below what I think is average, like both of us. Do you think? Yeah. Because before I came, I thought average there was like two, three K a month. Yeah. I think it depends on your housing situation because I always check like the housing pages on like Facebook and Craigslist like every day hmm. and not that I have intention to move house or just always want to know what the market rate is and what's available just in case. So I usually see around 1500 to 1800 and then obviously for a night, that's like for a sectioned off living room, which is the norm. Yeah. I think I might be thinking when I say two, three K like a solo. Oh a yeah. Solo, solo. It's like about, I'd say about, yeah, 2.5 K that side yeah like americans are really big on credit so it's like i found out three days before i had to move out of the place that they got and i think the first day i just hysterically cried and then the second day i was like right get it together find somewhere to live and i was really worried about the credit thing but it actually worked out so i only had to pay like a 250 deposit and then pro rated rate so it was like um, rent sorry so it's like 800 dollars for the first month so um it's just like a grand in total which was like fine and um yeah it just it all worked out i think i worried about it too much but i'd already been homeless that year in london so um i had a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder but um yeah i think it's easy to find somewhere if you need to there's always places going and it's like yeah mm. whereas like if you see something you have to snap it up straight away so it's not that bad and i managed to find somewhere in was it two weeks i was on your couch Oh yeah, yeah. You were on the couch for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I stayed on the couch for like two weeks and it wasn't that bad. And yeah. It was a comfy couch. I think that couch is very underrated. I think it's underrated too. Yeah, yeah it's a real great couch. The house is scary though, because it's like a six bedroom house with a basement. And I would always lock the basement door before I went to sleep, but it would always be open when I got up. So mm. um yeah. I don't know if someone was trolling me or <laughs> yeah, it was I'd like to think that I don't think that you said you locked as and you like put the lock thing on it yeah so it's like you know like a bathroom lock. yeah, yeah it was like it. one of those locks and i'd always lock it before i went to bed or i'd ask somebody to lock it and it would the door would always be a little bit open when i got up so yeah <laughs> yeah i think just generally the cost of living out there is just a lot like i think food like going out to a restaurant that's maybe one of like the biggest expenses so you got, i thought the food was okay for the price like do you I didn't I think, think it was too bad. So I think the portions are massive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was one thing as well. So, I couldn't yeah. order a main and finish it. So I had to <laughs> start ordering starters. Yeah. So maybe like for the quantity, it's kind of similar. The quantity of food you gain, but it's not like you can get a smaller meal kind of thing there. Yeah. I think every single, almost every single meal, I had to like pack it up and then just give it to some homeless person there because like, there's no way I could finish this. It's dangerous though, honestly. Like I gained 10 pounds when I moved over there. <laughs> like, I mean, you get accustomed to that size of food. So it's like, oh, this is normal now. 
And then I came back here and I would like eat something. I'd be like, this isn't enough food. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. really dangerous. Is it like addictive or is it like, because I didn't find like the, for example, the chicken, they're like too great, like personally. Oh yeah, the meat and stuff's really, but it depends where you go actually. Like I've been to some really nice fancy restaurants mm. and the food's been amazing. But even like fast food, like. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> you didn't take um, Hamish to Chick-fil-A, did you? No, no. Okay, that's where he often. messed up. Okay. Chick-fil-A is amazing. And then um, the chicken there is really good. I love In-N-Out so mm. much. In-N-Out's great. And that's just fast food. I don't eat things like McDonald's or KFC over there. I just couldn't. I, I couldn't even. The smell, it smelled worse from like outside. Yeah. And I, I really hate the smell of McDonald's and KFC right now. So. Yeah, I couldn't eat there. And um, The thing is, it's so tempting though, because it's cheap. And in, when you're living somewhere... Well, for me, it was in a way, but then I just really love a good burger or any burger, to be honest. Um, or Mexican's the big like cuisine there. Yeah, huge. Yeah, just like a burrito, sushi burrito. I haven't been there. Haven't I been. only started liking sushi when I moved to San Francisco. I didn't oh, like okay. it before, but I love it now. Yeah. Well, you should go to sushi burrito. No one actually... understands what that is. That's just sushi, but it's like a burrito. There was like actually burrito one shape. of I went to that um, that Mexican part and I got like a hot chocolate. They had a special hot chocolate bean. I don't know what it's called, but that one like tastes really nice. I don't know what you're talking about. They, basically, every morning whilst I was in San Francisco, since I, I was always like, I would get up early, go have breakfast and then I'd eat at, usually at Vernal Heights. Yeah. Provided it wasn't like raining or something. And what I do is I just keep trying every single um, hot chocolate in the seven days I was there. Oh. So I, w- I went to... On that Mexican high street, I think. I'm not sure what it was called. Mission Street. It was a Mission Street right next to, like, it's very close to your house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I went there and then they had some, I couldn't pronounce it. So I said, could I have that hot chocolate? Because they knew, they probably knew that we couldn't pronounce it. So Yeah. And then that one, I was just like shocked at how amazing. I think that was like the second best place that I had whilst I was there. Ah. So I definitely, if you're. Or second to Panda Express. Just check my trip advisor. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's for hot chocolates, don't <laughs> it? Hot chocolates, yeah. don't it? There was like seven places raided, and that was. You can link that in. <laughs> what some what were some of the things we did in San Francisco? We uh, first thing I think we cycled Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, that was fun. See, that was a bit too long for me. I was like, it took ages to get to the bridge. First of all, and then when we were on the bridge cycling, it was just hard to like if you wanted to stop and like take photos and stuff like that. The cyclists were angry. Yeah, yeah. I remember we got yelled at a few times. <laughs> but before that, we went uh, Russian River. That was fun. Yeah, had the that was great because it was like, what is it? The two like second day after we got there. Yeah. Yeah. So we got like a load of floaties. Um, what well, is your the company you work for? They um, it was their summer party, and the SVIPs like summer party combined, and yeah, we all were on a coach. I don't know how many of us were there, like fifty or so. Maybe something like that. Yeah, and um, went to Russian River. I'm not sure where that is. Like Northern California, maybe. It was north of San Francisco, I think. Yeah, it's definitely North Cal, but I don't know where exactly. Um, yeah, just a really long river. And then we all had like floaties. I was on the Flamingo. And then we just went down the Russian River, basically. We had like a load of alcohol, but it ended up lasting way too long. It's like survival of the fittest, basically. And I'm not a strong swimmer either. So like you're in this river on like a floaty and it just, we were there for like four hours. And then obviously you're drinking too and it's really hot. And then... You get past, you get like dehydrated basically because you drink in, it's hot. And then they're like, oh, it's only 30 minutes to the checkpoint. And it's like actually another two hours because you're going that slow. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot of wind either. So the river wasn't moving very fast. And and then it just got to a point where it was just cold. Yeah. As well. And we ran out of alcohol. So <laughs> <laughs> we were just like sitting on floaties. Just I think lots of people just, I ended up just getting out and walked. But a lot of it you couldn't walk because it got really deep. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't know. No, as in, I literally got out, oh. like onto the bank. Yeah, but it wasn't like a bank. You had to like go. You're literally like in a forest. So you uh, went into the forest and followed some route. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And then we found some houses in the street, a road, and I was with someone else. So we just, yeah, I just followed her. To be honest, what do ha- what would have happened if you didn't know how to swim and you did this? well um oh you didn't know how to swim well i do know how to swim but i'm not a strong swimmer so okay. for me it was kind of like i was skeptical about going in there in the first place but like i do like water even though i'm not a strong swimmer so um and we didn't know anybody that it was like our first time all meeting each other too mm. so um you meet all these people that 
you don't know. And then it's like, oh, I can't swim. And um, this lovely guy called Ben, who's like a really good friend now, he kind of just stayed with me. And then when it got too deep, he would like hold on to my floaty and just swim. So I wasn't too freaked out. It'd be like, this part's not too deep, so you can walk. And so um, I guess you just like, it's like the Hunger Games, you make alliances and then you try to survive. You, you can't swim, can you? Yeah, I can't swim. Do you want to like know how to swim? Probably one day in the like future. About learning. But I'd, I wouldn't want to like learn in like a public pool. Probably what? could. I'm just a bit of a hygiene freak, probably. This would, and, I'd, and I'd just want to like have one day, hopefully, when so I'm how rich, would... I would get, I'd have a, I'd get a pool with a house. I mean, a house with a pool, hopefully. <laughs> a pool with a house. <laughs> it's going to be bigger than Kanye's. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah, then hopefully learn one day in the future. But right now, since I don't plan to go anywhere near a situation where I need to swim, I'm not that concerned. But you don't know. Yeah, you could be on a plane and the plane I mean, crash. And then... I, I think there's more concern. If I, the plane's going to crash in the water, I think the possibility of survival is really low for me. Because if I can't swim, everyone else in that plane who survives and is fit will survive. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I see what you mean. But like, even I think just before I left SF, before it was getting cold, I used to go to my gym swimming pool every week <laughs> and I'd like swim a few laps and I was like terrible. But then um, I just got really into it. And when I go back, I'm taking like adult swim lessons and I can swim just like I'm not very strong, but I'm learning how to what, be. What do you mean? Like, what's, what do you mean? Like you can swim, but you're not strong. Like what's. So like, I'm just not. I don't know. Like, I'm not good at treading water. I can't okay. float. And I just couldn't, if I had to like stay out at sea for a while, like I, I'm not comfortable being in the sea. And um, mm. I really like water sports though. So I went to Cape Verde in December and they're really big on windsurfing. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I want to windsurf. So I'm like, <laughs> I need to learn to swim. I want to surf. I need to learn to swim. Um, just loads of like water sports but i think it's a really important skill to have yeah i mean i can't even cycle so like i'm sure that's really hi- yeah i'm sure that's higher on the list than me learning to swim um i don't know because i feel like swimming could save your life yeah cycling yeah. Really gonna save cycling your life. You'd, currently i don't really you'd never have to cycle my, if you don't want to in my opinion i don't think i'm going to get into a drowning situation like i avoid situations where i'm going anywhere near any sort of water but yeah. it's common where you, your friends may want to suddenly like feel like Oh, the cycles from this point in London to that point in London. But I'm like, on like the Boris bikes, but I'm just like, guys, let's not forget. I can't <laughs> cycle it. So yeah. you can just be like, oh, no, don't worry. I'll just hop on this bus. You can get a Lime <laughs> scooter, actually. They do that here, right? I think, have scooters been introduced here now? I thought they're not legal yet or road legal. I don't know. They're I a big thing in... Uh, I've seen people there. doing it, but I'm, I'm, I didn't think it was road legal yet. Oh, okay. But yeah, I don't... I don't yeah, I, I'm fine with taking the train and the bus and the other ways for the time being i like walking though so i'm not that fast but one day i have to learn how to ride a bike as well yeah yeah maybe start with the bike first and then yeah. swimming but swimming's important yeah one w- day uh water sports we also towards the end we did lake tahoe um yeah which was yeah we went to lake tahoe did you manage to like on a jet ski i so, did i was yeah. stuck on it for two hours thought i got pneumonia <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole episode. No, that that was probably one of my highlights of the whole year, like jet skiing. What, when she got pneumo- pneumonia? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I didn't even know you thought... Actually, no, yeah, because, yeah, we all left. Yeah, because me and Maria went jet skiing and then we got back and then you were all gone. Yeah. So then we ended up going back to the house, which the house, by the way, was like a Insane. mansion. Which, yeah, ridiculous. 16 um, bedrooms, indoor pool, steam room, sauna. Hot beautiful tub. Beautiful garden. Private chef. Mm. and there was two houses yeah there was two of those times yeah. two you were living a life uh, out there weren't you cinema room do you say cinema room and it was yeah. all paid for we had like that was oh, that. oh the cinema was awesome yeah this, this see this is where i'm like i don't miss it but when i think back now and like reminisce yeah. i'm like oh shit that was it's a nice life oh yeah that was yeah. pretty nice um it's not every day though no <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's the thing and yosemite yosemite was the one we did all as like yeah our group did it that was really nice uh, we did that for like Thanksgiving. We drove there. You drove some of the way. Yeah. I almost died, but. <laughs> in, a... in my defense, it's like learning how to drive on the other side of the road. I'm not really a confident driver here. And um, well, I am now, but I still can't park. But that's <laughs> not important. And um, yeah, it was driving automatic and I've only, I'd only ever driven manual. So that was an adjustment as well. Even though it's easier, like if you're not used to it. Mm-hmm. 
you yeah. expect to have more control over the car but i got us there safely nobody died so it's fine yeah, yeah. i find it funny because i actually on like the first or second day like so after we had slept i was meant to meet aaron at his offices but i saw this like three-wheel buggy i didn't know if you're allowed to drive it and then i found out all you need is it like a driving license or you know the country. small yellow the three-wheel really buggy small yellow cars oh the um and it's like a tour yeah, the yeah you rode one of those <laughs> yeah so i just got in one and then with my mate and then we just drove around half of san francisco and he was calling us where we are and we were like on the other side like near the bay and yeah. then he just sends him a video like i could i could imagine aaron being pissed as always like fam you're meant to be here on time yeah, <laughs> yeah. i was like we're well, supposed to be going out now and then i just see a video of him on this yellow like <laughs> they look car. Cool. it was oh. good until like unless you're like i guess away from the bay because then you're just taking in exhaust fumes and i didn't know you could turn right on the red light. I didn't know that this was. Oh, it trips uh, me out. Yeah. 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 So I was just there and people were beeping at me. I'm like, bitch, I'll beep back. Like, I <laughs> <laughs> so like, obviously at that time, I didn't know I, I was on the wrong until the like, Uber driver the next day told us. And I'm like, okay. It's weird, isn't it? Because yeah. like. You They're crossing the road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, I don't know who designed that and how it makes sense. Mm. Because if people are crossing and you can turn right, it's not logical. I, I just wait till I see the green man. And yeah, but like, people, cross. you can still cross yeah. when you see the green man, but people are still oh, turning yeah, yeah, right yeah. through cars. But I, like, I go quite slow. I always used to go quite slow because I was like, okay, yeah, looking. Because I don't trust anyone there driving. They never <laughs> yeah. stop in front of the line. Like at like um, oh, yeah, yeah. crossings. They yeah. never stop like, yeah. They're always like halfway across it. I'm like, all right. Um, <laughs> There's like one of those, What do you, is it like a truck? They're like, and we were in the three-wheel buggy. I thought it was going to hit into the back of us at one point. It was just like pulled up so close. I was like. I don't want to cross the line yeah, and get like something on my driving yeah. license because I'm abroad and someone has just pulled up behind me like this. The thing is, I think driving in America is quite nice as in like everything's so big, like the roads are massive. So driving along um, the bay was really, really nice. Yeah. Like, I think that was like probably the one of the nicest experiences. Yeah, because since I've been driving here, I've, I just panic, like not hitting the car and not hitting the barrier. And even like as I was driving to London on Friday, I was like, I like almost hit the height, the side of something and I'm renting this car too. And like the excess is crazy. And even if somebody hits into me, I have to pay for it. So um, I'm trying to be so careful, but the roads, I'm driving a really big car right now and the roads are so small and it's. Yeah. Why did you choose scary. a big car? Was that what they gave you? It, yeah. You don't pick something. You just tell them what class you want it in. And then if they have something, then they'll give it to you because they didn't have the car in the class that I wanted. They upgraded me for free, but like it's huge. <laughs> But I do, given that like I've been traveling around the UK, it's easier to drive. Like I find it easier to drive a bigger car in the motorway because it just sits nicely on the road. So mm -hmm. it's not that bad, but it's huge. Yeah. One of the things I don't miss about San Francisco is the homelessness like issue. Yeah. Like there's homelessness in London as well, but I, I never haven't seen it as bad as it was out there. Have you been to Stratford at night? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not Aaron. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't like roam the streets of Stratford, but yeah, I don't like... think she means East Village. I th think she means like no, you know where um. So you got like Westfield, and then you've got like the older part where you go shopping. Yeah. So inside there, they leave that open overnight for homeless people to sleep in there, and like um, obviously with that comes you know a smell of urine and yeah. stuff like that. But is it still as bad as a tenderloin? Oh God, no! The tenderloin's yeah. awful. Tenderloin? I walk around with mace when I'm there. The mace, ten tenderloin's yeah. like a neighborhood. Did you have any bad experiences with like homeless people? Yeah, first week, I was walking to my friend's house, and I'd been to SF before, so I was kind of just doing it by memory because my phone died. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna wander in this general direction to see how things work out, and I ended up in like a really rough area. And this guy with mental health problems comes straight into my face, yells at me, and I'm just like scared, so I kind of just run off. And then the same time I was walking down that same road, recovering from that situation. And this woman just yells at me, I will fight you. And I was just like, yeah, I'm gone. And just mm. sprinted the whole way there. And then there was a time I was like at Safeway, which is like a supermarket. Yeah. And this guy was like, just, I don't even know what he was doing. He was just being really weird and like making sounds at me. And you get really desensitized to it after a while. So um, yeah. and I'm kind of hot headed too. So I was a little bit desensitized to the situation and I just, like straight up pull my mace out of my bag and I was like if you come near me again I'll mace you and you yeah. can carry mace around legally yeah it's oh, great sweet. no license or nothing you can just okay, sweet. get it from Amazon <laughs> <laughs> and, and Hamish has noted it down <laughs> I mean yeah. okay what about like a taser like is that legal as well oh shit I'm thinking about getting one of those too yeah. well, I didn't know that was legal yeah oh shit gotta protect yourself man <laughs> <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do exactly so one of the uh, activities 
you took up in San Francisco. Or I'm not sure if you actually did before, but bowl dancing. Yeah, I did it before at uni. And yeah, that was just something that we did at the gym at uni. And then I brought a ball for my room. And um, it was just one of those fun things I do with my friends on like a Friday night. But then when I got to SF, my gym had classes too. But it's like a whole different level over there. Like it's wild. Like it's really... It's a competitive sport. I've got it here actually. In 2017, it was actually recognized as a sport for the first time. And I'm really grateful because like when you tell people you pole dance, the first thing is, oh, are you a stripper? Yeah, that was like, I was going to ask like, what made you get into pole dancing? Because there is like, I wouldn't say it's necessarily seen as a positive Oh, for sure. Thing. Like gen- just generally, like you think if someone says you're doing pole dancing, they'll probably look at you weird, like especially like the older people. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) I went to a strip club in my first year of uni in Portugal and it wasn't a nude strip club because you can't serve alcohol and be nude in some places for a strip club. But like um, there were like women and male, like female and male strippers. And like it wasn't even like what they were doing. It was just how they were doing it and the strength behind it. And it just looked like really liberating they were like super strong and even one of the strippers came over to us and was like like how strong is she like it's amazing isn't it it's such like a beautiful art and I was like yeah this is dope so um that's like how I got into it and then like the more I'm doing it the more I'm realizing that like it's not like a stripper thing if that makes sense because like I am in a gym I'm not taking my clothes off and um a lot of the time like it's not as sexy as people think it is so it's like trying to do a trick and like sweating and like super frustrated and it's more like gymnastics if anything Mm, yeah yeah i can see that yeah i don't know why people don't compare it to gymnastics as much right that would be helpful i haven't actually made that comparison before but thinking of it now it's yeah it's pretty much the same thing yeah so um it i find it especially recently (laughs) i've been finding it really difficult to like i'm a very so it's not really dancing as such People, there's like categories to it. So okay. like you can dance if you want to. I don't do a lot of the dancing. Cause I just don't think I'm very good at it. But um, like the trick stuff and strength, like I do a lot of strength training anyway. So like I like to do strengthy type tricks. But like even things like posting it on Instagram, like my female friends will see it one way and that's okay. But then random males that you don't know that follow you will think, oh, this is really sexy. Slide in TDMs and start talking shit. So mm-hmm. I- Oh, I know what that feels. <laughs> I have a separate Instagram what? for it now. <laughs> and um, I try and keep it private from people that aren't in the community or like aren't good friends of mine. But even like, I don't know, competitions where you have to be a little bit more public to like promote stuff. I had some pictures from a competition that were on my Instagram page. And my Instagram handle used to be my first name and my last name. So if you Googled me, that would come up. And like, obviously that's not a good look at all. And they weren't like very sexy photos, but like, I think if most employers see that, they're going to be like, what the hell? Hooray. Yeah, so I had to like frantically get the photographer. And you know, when like you've got cash pages, even if you delete it off like Twitter or whatever, like the cash pages show up on Google. So like you have to submit like a removal request with Google to get things taken off. And it was just like a whole night. This was like on fucking Christmas day as well. So like one of my friends was like, oh, I've just Googled you and saw this. And I kind of just panicked and it wasn't bad. And I'm not like ashamed of my art form, but because it's not like widely accepted, it's just difficult to... I don't know, be so open about it. Do you think it's changing? I think it's definitely changing. They're starting to like recognize it as an, well, they're thinking about recognizing it as an Olympic sport. So um, I think it will definitely change. But I was talking to Ben about it and he worked, he used to work for a company called Coffee Meets Bagel. Mm -hmm. He now started his own company called Absorbed. I just thought I'd plug that for him. Um, But yeah, so the CEO of his previous company is actually a pole dancer as well. And he like owns this amazing dating company and, Yeah, she was like on a magazine with it too. So I'm like, I can still be like a successful female in tech and still have that as my art form. And it doesn't really matter what the world world says. So yeah, and to me, as long as my parents are cool with it, I don't really care. So I'm very open about it with my parents. My dad came to my uni Were they always like cool with it? They're like cool with anything that I do. But like my dad came to my uni apartment with a saw and had to like saw the pole out of my room because I couldn't get it out. (laughs) So um, yeah, he's like really cool about it. And he's just like, yeah, you're really strong. Just don't hurt yourself. I think at university, I remember, like before university, I I probably thought the same thing, like pole dancing. That's kind of like, you just associate it with a stripper. Yeah. But then when you go to university, you see like people, it's like a society or a club or something, pole dancing. Yeah. And you can see them doing it like in the, well, for us at Warwick, it was like in the atrium. Mm. And you're like, oh, okay, that's, yeah, kind of cool. Yeah. And I think like in a world where women are constantly told to, 
feel embarrassed about our bodies or compare your body to so-and-so supermodel or these are the standards of beauty you should have. It's really liberating to be like accepting your body as it is and being strong and, you know, so I think it's like, it's a really beautiful thing and it kind of just definitely helped me feel more comfortable in my body and not care so much about, oh, I need to be skinnier, but, oh, I need to be stronger. I need to be able to like lift this much so I can hold myself or, you know, I think it's been a really positive thing for me mentally. Mentally and physically. Yeah, so for sides. sure. Yeah. What's kind of like the physical aspects needed? Um, Definitely like upper, upper body. body strength, yeah. yeah. Even leg strength as well and flexibility. I'm not the most flexible person in the world. So that's been something really positive for me to work on, but um, definitely upper body strength. I'm learning how to like hold myself in like a flag position right now. And it's not very easy. Does the society you work with ever do like performances or anything for anyone? Yeah. So I did a competition in August last year and um, they take it very seriously. It's very like technically challenging in the sense that like you can't just spin around. You have to do certain sequences or you can't like, I don't know do the same trick twice you have to do it in a different way and it like your piece you can't just be dancing it's got to have some like character to it or it's got to be a theme or you can't dance to any type of music it's got to have a certain type of musicality to it so the tempo has to be a certain way and it's very like it's more technical technically challenging than it is physically challenging how is it like graded so execution of tricks difficulty of tricks concept so you've got to have like a theme kind of thing mm -hmm. and um technicality and just things like even like when you do ballet for example they have this thing about micro bends your legs have got to be super straight at all times and just like the way that your muscles look when you're holding a position to see if you're really holding it in like the right way so it's like super technical so is that similar how the pole dance would be graded if it was like became an olympic sport it would it yeah, be the same thing pretty much it would kind of just be i think yeah Difficulty of tricks as well, I think, is a big thing. So I think it'd be the same for Olympic sports. You touched on like the perception of that being a women in tech as well. Yeah. Like, have you found it difficult? For sure. Not so much in San Francisco. Like my company are very good at recognizing me, not even recognizing me as a woman, kind of just like ignoring my gender, which is great. My very first inter my first two internships were fine. It was like maybe job two out of uni I really felt like a woman in tech and I was in an engineering office and I really they did a lot to make me feel like I was different and then I don't just have the whole I'm a woman in tech I'm a black woman in tech too so that's like a whole other subcategory and it was like it was awful sometimes and sometimes I would like leave the office and just like cry like it was really bad I was the only female engineer on the team so like when you say like black women in tech have you seen that yeah women in tech who aren't black have you been like treated differently to even you oh yeah so yeah i've seen it once i'm not gonna speak on it too much but then after the like roles were switched then it was all it was all okay because it was just like i guess that company slash team and yeah. yeah and i was just like oh, how can they still be doing this and like what, is, what year is it what? 2019 it happened so i was just like yeah, it's really real and it's not the problem isn't just with like black women, it's like any, like people of color basically. And in America, I know that the Latino women have a big problem branching mm. into tech or being taken as serious. So it's not just something that's unique to like black women as well. But I've had friends that work in tech, like other black female friends, and we'll like be on the phone, like comparing struggles. And um, that's really fucked up. Like, cause men don't have to have that problem. I think it's definitely something that we need to work towards. The way I kind of see it, cause like I've definitely been given jobs because I'm female and they want to, I'm female and I'm black. So it's like, oh, this is like Take, two points of yeah. diversity. Like, How do you feel about that? I don't like yeah. it, but then my black male friends have been like, you should use that to your advantage which is fair, but at the same time, I don't want somebody to hire me because they hit their diversity mm. quota. You should hire me because I'm the best person for this job. Because all that does for me is has everybody in the office look at me like, oh, well, she's only here because she's diversity. Like she's not good enough mm. to do this job. So that's, I don't think that's positive. I largely agree with the point that you should just hire people based on them, um, not based on like what they look like, but just if they're the best person in the job, just hire them. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, well, so we, we have a friend who I like spoke to quite a bit about this and he's like, he's, I think he's big in quote, like he's for the quotas because uh, subconsciously it's not going to change. Like people just subconsciously will just go for 
the non the like the white people yeah i mean i think i've been hired in the past for um the quota filling as well yeah so like, well, he was saying like if you don't necessarily know that there's a quota they kind of keep that quiet but then i guess subconsciously you'd think there was a quota or you'd be treated a few other people would treat you as you were saying like they'll look at you and be like oh she just got hired because of this and that yeah one of the things is like when you i guess when you eventually say like they hadn't seen a picture of you or hadn't judged you based off your name like when you get to interview stage in a lot of cases like because of obviously how times have progressed like currently it would usually be for example in tech or maybe just a white male that'll be interviewing you because like they're the higher ups and so on they've made their way up but nowadays day and age like obviously people of more i guess more color and more diversity are trying to make, make it through but we also have to help each other try and get into it because the stigma i guess tore down I was reading up on this um, the other day as well. So the stigma kind of taught down is that you usually just look at the guys and tell them, oh, you better be all tech savvy, blah, blah, blah. You better be a programmer because that's just the stereotype embedded in society. But yeah, you could, if you were to try and do the same thing with like everyone, just like in diverse schools, et cetera, then it could actually change it. And it's, it'll be a nice concept because then you'd see way more diversity and it wouldn't just be like, say even though the majority I'd say is like still male um, in tech, it wouldn't, even though they've added, like, I guess you could say they've added in, like, color or added in different races, but you could also then start to help the gender diversity thing level out. But you have to teach in, like, since super early. It can't just be, like, suddenly at uni. It can't be, like, at secondary school. It has to be, like, primary school. Like, the options have to be there. And it has to be shown that, oh, look, that's a large figure in um, tech and she's a woman. So you could follow her in her footsteps and she's done this. But Yeah, for sure. I think it needs to start at a very early level or early age where... So like the whole point I think I've got here, like the whole like women in tech thing stems from, so girls are less likely to study STEM, sub, STEM subjects at school, which is like a statistic. And that continues throughout university and the careers. And that's just because they're not given, they're not given enough info on what working in the sector is like. No one is putting it forward as an option to them. Lack of female role models and being put off because it's too male dominated. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, the main four points from like one of the articles I read. So like, so I went to an all guys school. So I don't really know what it was like or what it's like for girls. Like if they are in girls' schools or mixed schools, like if they are like encouraged to like do STEM subjects and are like they're given a lot of options for that kind of stuff. I'm not too sure. Well, you felt like you kind of weren't. Oh, well, you're in tech. So how did that Good yeah, come about? Um, you just wanted or that was just always an interest kind of thing. Yeah, I was really artsy in school and musical and I wanted to pursue that and I was doing IT and you know when you have to pick at GCC what you want to do. So we had like a double IT option, single IT and then I think one of them clashed with music or no, it clashed with art. Like obviously everyone was just taking normal classes and my IT teacher sat me down and was like, I think you could be really good at this and you're not going to make much money in art. You can do that as a hobby. You should probably do this. It was just kind of one of those things where I didn't even think about it and like even thinking about it now, actually, the guys at school were a little bit like sometimes a bit jealous when I was doing well in IT assignments because like I was just naturally pretty good at it. That didn't really bother me. And for me personally, I'm competitive for a start. So yeah. for me, I will walk into a classroom and it's like I have to be better than everybody else. But also like especially then as well, like my dad's always said to me that like because you're a woman and you're like a woman of color, you have to work four times as hard as everybody else. So. I didn't really care about the fact that there was like so many guys there. For me, it's like, okay, cool. You just have to come into this room and dominate it basically. And that's just how it's always been. So like even with work as well, and like a lot of women were for kind of discouraged to go into tech roles. For me, it's like, I try not to think of myself as a woman. I try not to identify when I'm like looking for jobs. It's like, this is me and these are my skills. Like anything exterior doesn't affect that. So a really real conversation with a teacher that like, saw potential and actually pushed me was like really important and I'm really grateful for that conversation I think it's the, the ethnicity bit's quite interesting because like you do have a lot of Asians like even female Asians in tech um, yeah. especially in San Francisco like so yeah do you think there's any reason in particular why like not only like black females but just black people in general aren't really as much in the tech scene yeah because of education and gentrification and things like that, like typically, statistically, they are moved to poor areas and education isn't as good for those people, especially in America. So they're not naturally going to progress into tech. And like, even, I don't really want to say so much here, but, and I don't know what the situation is here, but like, 
I'm Caribbean. So I remember being at uni around a lot of like African students and they were like, oh, Caribbean people don't make it here. So like I was like with other black people that were telling me I wasn't the right kind of black, you know? And the fact that I was doing computer science as well, it's like, oh, you're not the right kind of black and you don't even seem like you're smart enough to do this thing. And I was like, okay, you know, I don't have to prove myself to anybody. And like, so do it you see that as motivation? Yeah, no, so like I don't really care what, people that don't know me and make a decision on me based on what they think people like me should do. That's like a sign of ignorance, but it's also a lack of intelligence. So those opinions, those things don't really matter to me because it's just like, you don't know anything about me. You don't know what I can do. So it's all good for you to make that judgment based on nothing essentially. So that was never a problem for me. Yeah, I think people sometimes just need to like learn it. focus on yourself instead of right. like trying to tell other people what they can do. Because I had that in my school as well. Well, I was told like I should never apply to above King's College or Queen Mary's. Yeah. Um, in one aspect regarding to grades, like it was probably arguably a wise thing for them to say, but I just chose to ignore it and I just went ahead and applied to like Oxford, Warwick, UCL, and I managed to get offers from all of them minus Oxford at the time. So I was just like, so you guys told me like the teachers um for a start. That I couldn't apply to this, but I have a w- offer from Warwick UCL and the two places you said. So now, and they're arguably way better in the league table at the time as well. So I was like, you know, now, like, what happens now? Like, it's like, yeah, you better work hard to get the grades. I'm like, I will, believe me. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? Because, like, my dad said to me very early on in his career, like, he went on to study chemistry and was like a scientist and worked in a lab. And um, at school, his teachers told him that he'll never have a career in science and he should just do sports. And that was very common to tell like young black males, especially like, I think even in America, that's why a lot of them like are on scholarships doing sports related yeah, things. Yeah. Cause they tell you like, especially us, you not, you can't be smart enough to do this thing. And he was like, he was really passionate about science. He's like, no, I'm going to do this thing. And like, he's doing, he really enjoys it and he's doing pretty well. And like, he loves science. So yeah, he's, he just didn't, you kind of just don't need to focus on that. And if you have people around you and parents that tell you, that kind of give you those affirmations. It doesn't matter what the schools say. Yeah, that's very true. There was a, um, so there's an academy in San Francisco called the Hackbright Academy. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Yeah. So I remember I actually went with the, the startup I was working at. We were looking to hire some engineers. So I went to a demo day, which is provided by Hackbright Academy. And that's an academy where they, it's all, it's women only. And they, I think they put them through like a kind of coding boot camp. Yeah. And then at the end of this like boot camp, they create a project and then they demo it to like all these employers. Um, so I was there on one of those demo days and it was really cool. Like I think there was like 30 women that all created these like web applications and some of them were like pretty impressive. Like, I think they got taught like skills, like, or like standard stuff, like HTML, CSS, but then like react and how to use like the Google maps API and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool. And I think that is one of the biggest, um, like coding schools in san francisco let alone just like female ones well i think it's the biggest female one for sure but i think it might be one of the biggest ones yeah just in general um but yeah i do think i think you touched on it earlier but the difference between san francisco and england or london rather i mean my only bad experience has been a woman in tech have happened in the uk Mm. and um yeah so I haven't even... But maybe from like people, other people. Do yeah. You heard, like... I've heard stories about it. And a lot of people, a lot of companies now in San Francisco are very PG about what they say to women and how they treat them because they have to be. But I've definitely heard stories about that. And I've like, because a lot of the girls that I pull dance with, for example, all are like software engineers. They all work in tech as well. So they all like, some of them have said that they've definitely felt different being in the office and have had problems as well. So it's very normal. And it's like, it's weird because when I go for a new job, I don't have anxiety about whether I can do the job or what they're going to give me. It's like, I have anxiety about the people there and how they're going to treat me. And like, I have to accept that that's my whole career now. And that might not ever change in my lifetime. Yes. Pretty, uh, yeah, it's not. Like it's sad. Big, yeah. yeah. It's pretty sad. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. Yeah. Um, I was also curious to one thing, like, do you, yourself as in like try help with the woman in tech or the diversity thing like, or you were planning to help or something yeah so I was actually volunteering at a women in tech events in San Francisco and like even when people hit me up on like LinkedIn and they ask questions and stuff I'm always like really open to it and open to helping but I don't think it's my job to help and the reason I say that is okay. because I read Sheryl Sandberg's book um Lean In and like 
if you think about it, I'm a woman in tech and I don't have a problem with being a woman and I don't have a problem with working with other women. So the people that have the problem, they should be given sensitivity training. They should go to these women in tech events and see what women can do because they have the problem, right? Not me. So for me to spend like, because I think when I worked at Vodafone, they used to ask the women to spend 30% of their time at women in tech events. So it's like, okay, I spend 30% of my time doing this. Wait, why would you have to spend it at a... You don't so have what happens to, at this women in tech event? It's just like normal events, networking and stuff and like voluntary stuff okay. for their committee. But um, and you didn't have to do it, but they wanted, they were trying to encourage women to spend more time on it. And it's like, okay, cool. So that 30% I take out of my job, I don't get that 100% that the male gets. And then he still has a problem when all these women come in. But why do I have to do that? Why doesn't he do that? Because it's his mindset that needs to change, not mine. So it doesn't make sense to me that the people that don't have the problem have to sit and invest all this time solving a problem that they don't have. And because they don't have this problem, they don't have the whole concept of the whole context. So the people that have this problem that like have the context of why they have this problem should have to do that training. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I wasn't trying to attack you. (laughs) Oh yeah, I (laughs) know. Yeah. I was just saying like, um, if you ever thought that you could inspire someone else, like um, to maybe like help bridge that diversity gap in the future. Yeah, I mean, I do help other women, but yeah. I do help men if they ask me for the help as well. Like, okay. I don't say, oh, because we don't need any more white males. I'm not helping oh, you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, again, it doesn't bother me. And it's all mm-hmm. like people specific too, because they might be white males, but have no, they might not have a like gender bias and they might not see that. So I'm open to helping anyone that asks me. Yeah, I, f- I feel like it's maybe even, it's like almost a complete opposite for us, almost. Yeah, we're not white, but I feel like being like with an Indian ethnicity, ethnicity, it's kind of like almost expected. You're just going to go into tech. No, no, I don't think so. Do not, not for me. I was like, when I first told my parents I was going to do computer science, they were like, they're like, no, what are you doing? You need to go become an accountant or a doctor and get some good money. I'm like, shut up. And I'm just going <laughs> to do my own thing. Uh, but that's more like, I don't know. I feel like there's but so like many they, Indian they, people They did not see me with a future in computer science until like, I ended up at Warwick. And then their friends told them like, the first years at uni, I prevented going home, especially just because They'll be like, oh, look at you doing, you're at, you're at Warwick. First, I didn't heard of Warwick, so it didn't help my case. Oh. So, like, I was just still getting um, shit for it. Like, and I was like, and then eventually, like, someone basically, one of their friends had started telling oh, Warwick's like an amazing university for computer science, yeah. And then suddenly their opinion changed. I'm like, fam, you're busy listening to your friends instead of me, so that's your fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then I carried on. And then, obviously, when I started handing them a good amount of money a month to obviously help with our finances, and then suddenly the mouth was like kind of zip closed. I did the animation, but I realized that we're on a podcast and a video. <laughs> but have you ever like applied for like a job or something and been like, you have to try a bit harder? I mean, I thought like usually like, so one, I, one I, I don't think I've ever felt that. Like one of the jobs I think I got was like, I ticked the box. When I ticked the box for saying like, oh, I'm from like a different social class background. So as in like financially, I'm pretty sure that helped. Like it's for to help with social mobility. So even then, like, I always think that oh, I'm still there for social mobility more than filling their quota than I am for, like, my skill set, despite, obviously, what I may have proven already. Yeah. So, like, that's always in the back of, I guess, my mind when I think about that. However, yeah, like, I, I don't think about it just because I'm Indian and I'm in tech. That it gives me an advantage. I didn't really, really not, know. Not necessarily an advantage, but there's no, like, problem. I've never, I've never considered that way. Because hmm. I didn't know that there were a lot of Asians in tech till I got into t- like yeah an actual job so that was like pretty new to me I, I just expected it to be like basically white male devs that's all I expected yeah but that's problematic as well like because especially in San Francisco everybody's a carbon copy of each other so like even it's just when you have like tech hubs and then you've, you hire all the same kind of people that are into the same thing that all dress and look the same way like SF has a starter pack <laughs> <laughs> um, like it's just it just makes the whole like area just shit because of it. Because like, just the same kind of people. Mm. It's just the same thing. That is, that is one thing I haven't missed. Like I do feel like being back home, like in London, it's a lot more diverse. Yeah. Like no one, like I don't meet other software engineers unless I'm working with them or their uni friends who did computer science. Whereas yeah. in San Francisco, it's literally, or it feels like literally everyone you meet no, everybody you meet is a software engineer. Even the guy at the gas station. Yeah. <laughs> which which is, can be a good thing, like for the networking aspect I mentioned earlier and that kind of stuff. Um, but 
it's a bit it's a bit annoying when you want to meet like different people and yeah know, for sure because like, like but what comes with it as well is especially the what's the instagram fully vested uh, yeah <laughs> so like everybody there kind of wears is it all birds yeah all uh, birds. i've got purple birds yeah he um, really got into the oh like, these are the shoes place that he made us go to the most comfortable <laughs> shoes in the world they're so ugly um they're not ugly they 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 look they're good. dead like <laughs> oh, no, i think they look nice yeah all birds uh patagucci yeah patagonia vest which i'm wearing now as well hate them burn them all that's because not a lot of the time your company gives you one yeah so like i've got one with the company i was at like embroidered in it but like, no people just wear them like what is it about like, i don't understand like maybe it's like, just a different fashion it's, sense like, it's just like a california, california. it's weird isn't it yeah it's just yeah. like a california <laughs> brand i think i think it's californian i'm not sure um it's just a brand that um it's like north face patagonia it's pretty big in the uk as well I know like right now like when i speak to you i feel like you like when i came in like to his house today like, i was like so it's only wearing it this Dej, like... i'm only wearing it because dej is here so okay. yeah. yeah i was like who yeah. is this person like i've never seen him wear what do you mean i wore this like every day in san francisco to be fair yeah it was yeah. bad but san francisco <laughs> i guess was a bit more of a blur because i was expecting americans so I, I don't know like san francisco but i wouldn't say this is american this is just a vest like a gilet. I would never see anyone in the UK wearing that. I would see them wearing a body right? warmer, but yeah, not yeah, that. Yeah, you don't see. Well, that's because most people in London are wearing like suits. No. No. What? Even yeah. people that work in tech don't like walk around in the same thing. Like, I, don't know. I walk around London, there. I see most people are wearing like. You're going to the shirt, laser, Where are you trousers. going there? Just into central. Anywhere in central. Oh, yeah, because like... it's all like finance there. What, but if what, you go what to you like. Wear? Where do you wear? I wear suits, but like exactly. I wear I wear crepes. I still wear crepes. I don't wear a tie or anything. I um, I don't necessarily mean a fully suit, like a wedding suit. I mean like shirt, blazer, trousers. But that's because of my trousers. workplace. I don't really. Yeah, but that's Canary Wharf. Yeah. Okay, that's why. If you go yeah. places that like have like, because I used to work in St Paul's, and then was doing tech, and I had to dress up quite a bit for work because I went to a bank, and then like my more like startupy techie jobs were in Old Street, and that's oh like, yeah, the like Shoreditch area. Yeah, you're yeah. not gonna find that. Like, exactly. I don't think when I when I get a job, like, I don't think... Same with Soho. I'm going to be wearing, yeah. like, jeans, t-shirt, whatever. Exactly. But it, I think it just depends where you work, because, like, there's a lot of finance here. Yeah. People but I definitely see, I'd say it's more smart than San Francisco. Yeah, because London's, like, a um, finance hub. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's what, that's what I mean. Yeah. I remember, like, over, like, the Christmas period and stuff, yeah, I was wearing my, like, I went... Because there's no, no one going to be in office, so I was like, I'm going to just go back to my casual Fridays or, like, what I'm wearing today, so I was like put it up and everything and then suddenly i remember i had to be id to get into my own building i was like wow no i have my building pass right here like I'm, yeah. i still work then they started when they just know me as a guy but i still have to keep my building pass ready because security um they're not a fan of anyone coming with a hood let alone to canary oh. wolf if you come into canary wolf yeah and you're not like dressed in a certain way or like you don't fit like what they would expect in canary wolf they will like stop you the security really yeah to fair, i don't have airpods which were i think that's also a common san francisco thing you have yeah AirPods, so yeah, I think I had them before I moved there, though. Uh, okay. Yeah, I did. I had them before I moved there, but, like, AirPods are just great for, like, going to the gym, yeah. basically. But uh, Yeah, I, pro- I probably did fit into the San Francisco blue. You did, a lot. Bro, a bit. No, I remember him telling me about his backpack, as, the, as they call it. So what was backpack. it? Yeah, you got, like, some American, or, like, some super, like, what is it, like, hip American backpack or something? I had that at university, though. What oh, that backpack? Like, like a bag on the back. No, but no. what like brand was it? He, you got uh, a fancy one. I remember you telling me like you got this one from work and then... My main one's my uh, Air SF bag. But I actually... So that's from a San Francisco company. But I actually got that for you when I was at university. And then I got their travel version when I was at Amer- in America. When I was like traveling to New York. But it's not fancy. It's like plain black. But it's just got like a load of compartments and stuff. Is that the backpack that I do recommend has? it. Hmm? Is that the one that everybody has? No, 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 that's, um, no, I, I didn't really see a lot of people wearing that okay. in San Francisco. I know Herschel was another brand a lot of people had. I know, in, a lot of the, all the startups in San Francisco, they love like, I know, customizing their own shit, don't they? Yeah. Like clothes, t-shirts, backpacks. Mm, but with like branded stuff, so like the Patagonia vests that like yeah, branded yeah. If I ever worked for a company that gave me one of those, I'd give it them back. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll take it and give it to my siblings, but I wouldn't these, use these it. These are like a hundred dollars. I'd be like, I'm good. Like 
That doesn't mean I'm going to wear it. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you shouldn't give it back. I'd give it back. I'd give it to like my brothers or something, if anything. But I would not wear it. I refuse to wear something like that. I would give it back and be like, can I just have a plain branded one, please? Or no brand, just a plain mm. one. So, so I, I think it looks good. I kinda, can I like choose the design or the color? <laughs> yeah. I cannot have that, that, this gray, the static gray design that he has on his. It bothers me too much. Right yeah. I, I, would, I was thinking of just buying one anyway without the logo. Didn't you buy one logo. anyway? I feel like you had three. <laughs> I, I bought my own t shirt. Okay. $100 yeah. t shirt, yeah? No, not $100 t shirt. Oh, okay. 200 No. 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 <laughs> I, th I think it looks good, to be honest. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm not going to bow down to your negativity. Uh, right it's not negativity, it's just different taste. Anyway, moving on. Um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry, Prince Harry, and Meghan Markle. Although I don't know if we can call him Prince Harry anymore. So they strip them of their titles because... Yeah, they have to lose all the wealth and everything, I think. Yeah, I know that, like, I've only been reading up on it very briefly today, but... Um, something happened today. The Queen was like... She announced she, she had confirmed big it mad. something. Yeah, she seems, like, livid about the whole mm -hmm. thing, giving him the backlash. And I love how people have affectionately named it Megxit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's quite funny, to be fair. That's um, very funny. Yeah. What What's your take on it? If they want to live their own life, let them. Like, yeah, I'm. I'm kind of like. Why does it come with all this? Do why, what you want to do. And why does everyone else butting into their business? Like. Yeah, yeah, I think she probably should have known what was going to come with it when she came. I, yeah, I agree with that, and I think. Well, I think both of them should have known. Yeah, she should have known what was going to come with it, and he should have also like know there was going to be like backlash. Yeah, but... like as bad that is, like. It surprised me a little bit, actually, because a lot of people are saying it's a race thing, and I don't know. Do you think it's racing? I don't know. Maybe. I personally think it is. Yeah. But, like, at the same time as well, like, this is really annoying because, like, she's not full black. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that might sound like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, like, I don't know, to most people, but, like, even as a black person, like, even when Barack Obama was, like, elected, everyone's like, oh, he's the first black president. It's like, yeah, but he's not full black. He's, like, technically half. And, like, I'm not saying... Saying there's a distinction, but I know for them, having lots of mixed race friends, they don't want to have to pick sides and they acknowledge both sides of their heritage. So like, it's kind of unfair for them that the world doesn't really understand that people of dual nationalities do, like both heritages play like a big part for them, especially if you're like in a mixed race household where you've got like a mom that's white or a dad that's black. It's like, there's two cultures there. And like, I've kind of definitely experienced that firsthand because my dad's ex-girlfriend that lived with us was white. So like, I've had to have our Caribbean culture, her English culture, like, so I understand. But like, I felt bad for her because I didn't know how bad the situation was here in terms of racial tensions. Like, I've definitely had microaggressions here, like, especially being at work and stuff. But like, I didn't feel like people were this open about it here. And it's like super open. So yeah, I'm kind of embarrassed of the UK because even in America, when I've had situations there, I always say to my friends, oh, it's not that bad in the UK. But Apparently it is. Yeah. I've there were some videos that. also circling online about some people who are like so invested in the real family, usually like elderly white, like both male and female. Yeah. And they're like, oh no, she has been a disgrace from the moment she got married. Like she should have never got married and etc. And I was like, family man, just shut your mouth. Like, But I think there's a lot more that plays into it as well because like she's American mm -hmm. and like she wasn't, I don't know what Kate did before she got married, but like. Megan was on Suits before she got married. So people already knew her anyway as a Hollywood actress. So I think those things as well kind of went against her before she even like joined the royal family. Yeah. I, I, I never like to assume it's a racial reason. Yeah. I always try to think it's just, yeah. I like to think it's just something different than racial. I'm not sure what I think, to be honest. Um, I know like Princess Diana, she was white. Yeah, but I think she still got but I think she did spend her, her time around more like multicultural. Yeah, that's, that's and like more different people yeah. than what the royal family would expect or what we assume for it to expect. Mm. And that's what probably led to her. Um, you know, that this is just, there's a long, there's like a lot of reading to do mm -hmm. behind as well. I'm not going to go into it, but yeah. that's my assumption on it yeah. based on what I know. But I think, and like, I think a similar thing may, could have ended up happening to Megan. So, like, it's better that they just drop out the royal family, in my opinion. I don't think you can ever drop out though. What do you mean? Can you? You can't never drop out. Like if they drop the wealth and everything behind, like what's wrong? Yeah, but he's he's always gonna be. He's never gonna be poor, is he? But to, yeah, but like, Megan yeah. was her own person before this, anyway. So like, she can go back to acting. Like yeah, mm -hmm. 
I don't think I, there is a video that came out of like Prince Harry. There's Beyonce, Jay Z, Mega Markle, and Mega Markle's like saying hi to Beyonce and Jay Z. Where and Prince Harry's talking to the like CEO or someone high up at Disney, I think. And like Harry's like gassing up Megan, like, oh, you know, she does voiceovers. Yeah, she should get her on like. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, really? Uh, yeah, we'll have to talk or something. I know there's been like loads of media companies, like the Netflix CEO has been like interested in like doing something with them, like both okay. of them maybe. All right, Netflix are first to hop on in any story. Of <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm so I'm generally quite a fan. I'm not, I won't, maybe not a fan. I'm like, I quite like the royal family. I don't like really all of have... them or just these two. No, I mean like just generally. Yeah. Like I know or it's not like I like I don't like them. Yeah, I just I don't it's not I don't I don't not like them. So you don't dislike them? Yeah. But I like them as well. I don't have a problem with them. Like I know a lot of people have a problem with or I think the main thing is just why is there this family? This one family like almost randomly selected or well, not randomly selected, but from like previous generations that won a battle once or something. And this family are somehow seen to be better than us. Mm. I think that's the main argument against the royal family, like why a lot of people want it to be like just abolished. But yeah, I don't really care, to be honest. Yeah. I don't really care. Like they you know can, what, if they want to yeah, do their thing. I think there's, they have a lot of, uh, I, I watched The Crown tv series oh my god and i can't base everything on that but there's like a lot of i know there's a lot there's it's not an easy job as well you know i remember at uni uh, when we were just in one of our labs at computer science and me and aaron just like randomly found out about this rumor about harry and Me- megan at the time yeah yeah and we just started talking about that and everyone just t- turned to us like some people were like shocked that we were just talking about we were, we were just like gassing up like oh my days harry's such a sick guy oh <laughs> maybe that's sick for me again you just Everyone was like, what are these two on? No, I think fun. we were just like, Harry's punching bears. Like, <laughs> yeah, good for him. And I remember we watched the wedding, like in computer science. Did we? Yeah, we had it up on the like monitors. I think one of us had it up on like BBC News. One of us had it on Sky News or whatever. Yeah. I, I actually get excited when it's a wedding. I, I, like, I watch it, like even uh, Kate and Williams. I get excited about the day off that we get. But um, yeah. <laughs> I don't really care about them. Like, I don't think we need them necessarily. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't think we need yeah. them. Yeah. So I think it's definitely a waste of taxpayers' money. And um, But they do bring in quite a lot of tourist attraction. Like, say we just took away, like, the royals and maybe took away, like, what's behind Buckingham Palace. That's a lot of tourist attraction also gone. I think we could keep the palace. Because yeah. um, <laughs> it's a historical monument. Yeah. So we definitely keep the palace and stuff like that. But they don't really have any political grounding. Mm-hmm. And, um... Like, if you look, like, back in the day why we had monarchies in the first place, because I watch a lot of, like, kind of old historical, like, shows. So, like, this one's, like, an over-dramatized version of, like, Mary, Queen of Scots called Rain on Netflix. Oh, and then I um, think, uh, yeah, I think I started watching it. Yeah, I like, love it. It's, like, way over-dramatized, though. Mm-hmm. But some of it's true to history. And then um, another one I watch as well is about the Medicis from Italy. And um, they're not royals, but, like, obviously you have, like, your royals, your nobles, blah, blah, blah. So, um... Like, I understand from those times why it was important to have a monarchy because, like, they actually ruled the land. But, like, these guys have no political mm-hmm. grounding, so it's yeah. like, what's the point? And, um, yeah, we could keep the, like, palaces for tourism, mm-hmm. but yeah. we don't actually need the people. Yeah, like, I, I wouldn't say I cared about it at least. Like, I just thought it was, like, interesting gossip at the time as well because the uni was still, like, a bit more immature than we are now. Yeah. And we were just having a good old giggle in the department as we normally do, so... But yeah, like, I think I just remember that time where everyone just like turned around and started looking at us like, why are these two talking about the royal family? It's like one of the things I think of like when I see like Buckingham Palace and stuff like that, even with uh, like the Pope and the Catholic Church, like they've got so much money. Like, why don't they just sell half of it and just give it to like charity? <laughs> That's what I think of a lot oh, of it. Like, no, in, because it's a business, honey. Like, but, like in Buckingham Palace, you've got you probably have a clock just randomly that no one knows about. That's worth like. Oh yeah, hundreds of thousands of pounds. Like just, just get rid of it. You don't need it. Well, it's funny that you say that because I was just some friends yesterday, and we're talking about like the same thing. And um, one of them had been to Rome and was like saying that you have to pay like thirty euros to even get into Vatican City. Mm. And obviously, that's meant to be like holy land and like for churches and stuff. But like, it's a business. Like, and they mm. make so much money from it. So why would they not charge people? And why would they give all the money to charity? 
And yeah. it kind of goes back to how people were historically in religion where you had to buy a place into heaven or you had to pay tithes into the church to keep the like pastor or priest going. So it's just a business and it's the same with the royal family too. Yeah. Overall, I just think they should just do just do what they want. Yeah. I'm, really like, I don't care if they want to. And uh, yeah. Man. I don't care if they want to leave, if they want to, they don't really affect me. I don't live here, so. And I don't really, I, <laughs> yeah, just I don't like, understand don't why really people. Care. Well, they're going over to, not even going to America, they want, they're going to live in a. Canada. Yeah, Canada. It's a good place to live. Have you been? Yeah, Toronto. Yeah, I'd like to go to Canada. It's supposed to be really friendly, friendly people, I think I've heard. Yeah, yeah that's why I want Canada, to. Canada, so that's why I want to go. Okay, <laughs> I'm joking, not just that. Home of Drake. Well, I want to go now because it's now the home of, uh, oh of our Dutch and Duchess of Sussex. Oh my gosh. Or former Dutch and Duchess of Sussex. <laughs> Big them up. I just want to know what post like real life will be like for them because like obviously they're always everyone's gonna know who they are. There's no like it's kind of like at the same time, what's the point? Because fair enough they don't have to do their like royal duties, but everyone knows who you are. You're always gonna re be referred People, to. Yeah, they're gonna be no he's he's gonna be Prince Harry. Yeah. Like he's not gonna be Harry. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but he remember when they also did like the time in like the forces or whatever, and like I guess it didn't matter then. So like if they just continue on but not associated with the royal family, I don't I don't see what's too deep. Like no, it's not deep. It's just I don't know how much of a difference. Yeah, like it's, it's not gonna make a difference. I think like, like don't yeah. like don't he wasn't going to be king. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, yeah, that was also another thing. Like why does it matter if he's not going to be said king, which doesn't matter anyways. Yeah, I was reading actually. I think it's um, either Spain or I want to say Sweden, but I don't know if they have a monarchy there. But um, they can only have certain number of people in the royal family, and everybody else has to like, although they're technically royals and still have a claim to the throne, like they just have to disappear. Basically, they're not seen as royals mm -hmm. because they're trying to keep the money down that they used to spend, like to support in the royal family. Basically, I think that makes sense. But at the same time, if anything was to happen to, um, what's the brother called again? William. So much I don't care about them. <laughs> uh, Prince anything, William, a future yeah. king. <laughs> if anything was to happen to Prince William, like his kids, then Harry would be the next king. Yeah. So they kind of have to keep him alive, so to speak. I think he's like sixth in line or something. So yeah, but quite... wait, he's, he's only got two sons, right? But then I think he'd go to, oh, so he wouldn't go to the daughter. Actually, no, no, yeah. So there's Charles, because Charles is still next. And then you've got William. And then you've got George. Yeah. And has he got a brother? I feel like there's a brother, George. I think they've got another boy. So that's four. Yeah, they've got two boys. And then. Oh, so maybe then. So he'd be fifth. I thought they had, Wait, do they not have three kids? They have a daughter. Yeah, so he'd be like sixth or something. Um, so let's say something was to happen to the kids because yeah. anything could happen <laughs> then it, like you still need to keep him alive and like i wonder mm -hmm. if he would want to come back and do it because he can just say no so then like can he just return but like, he could just change it entirely. what if his kid grows up and he's like i don't want to do it either no he's like because now the kid's going to grow up not being a part of the royal institution yeah I and mean, what if the kid grows on being like you know i want to be i want to be fucking king i want to be a prince <laughs> Could be a king in your own right. Like, Why not? King of your house. That's a good question, actually. King can the Toronto. kid turn come back? And, what's his name? Archie. Yeah, I think so. I wonder if Archie could come back and be like, "Oh, I want to be in the royal family." Yeah. I don't think his parents will let him. To be honest, they're probably going to talk no. so much shit about the queen. Yeah, so probably not. <laughs> he probably won't want anything to do with it. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it would be safe for the child to go back, anyways. So yeah, I'd, I'd rather just let them. Just let them be. Everyone should be focusing on their own lives, but here they are. Yeah, but um, I'm I'm looking forward to like seeing Prince Harry in some like film i think he's gonna i think i think he may end up doing more charity work I yeah because i think he's like always stayed around charity work anyways yeah. and with megan markle who also does a lot of charity work mm. i reckon she they, could, they would raise so much awareness do you know like, she thinks she could get back into acting oh for sure she, why yeah. wouldn't she be able to do i don't see no that. i'm saying do you oh, okay. think she will yeah not like if it's possible yeah. like suits made her career like for her um, and especially being a royal that just adds like or was a royal adds credibility sure. and that just means that if anything, that more people are scared to say no, because like you will get some viewership that follow her. Mm -hmm. But she'll be in like amazing movies if mm -hmm. she's going to go back. Like the royal family will still be mega against that. Yeah, she'll be Even like DiCaprio level movies if she was to get back into yeah. her acting. Like she would have to like she go in and be like she new James Bond. Yeah, who's the <laughs> female version of DiCaprio? Like who's like female actress at that level? 
like Margaret Robbie maybe I want to say like Meryl Steep but she's like an I different kind of icon so I couldn't really say her who was that female Doctor Who recent in recent times Jodie Whittaker I think she's I, I, don't, I don't think that's like she's the same like level DiCaprio. we're talking about like I'm like DiCaprio's Brad Pitt yeah, but, Will Smith's like that level who's the female equivalent to that to be fair Margaret Robbie probably is at the moment no Angelina Jolie she's Ooh. like iconic yeah iconic but yeah. not really current yeah I'm, yeah, but like, um, she did Maleficent too. How recent is that? Like, recent? Is, is Maleficent like that? Good thing. All that? I mean, I it's doing okay. She did Wanted, right? She was the one where the bullets curved. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's the one I remember her from. She's kind of iconic. People, she's a big name in Hollywood. Jennifer Aniston. She's more like sitcoms and rom coms, so. The Beyonce. The Beyonce not, of not Beyonce, I think but... basically that's <laughs> who Meghan Markle have to like. Who she'll want to be. She won't want to go back and do something like Suits, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, Suits is done anyways, as well. Oh, I, I didn't yeah. watch it. Or <laughs> like do Sandra it. Bullock. She's special. like an icon. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, she'd have to be like a Sandra Bullock type. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens anyway. Nicole Kidman. All these names are calling me <laughs> now, yeah. <laughs> that level, basically. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to say Love Island, but I'm like, I'm not like a diehard fan. But um, I've, I've been watching this season as well. Of course you have. Yeah. <laughs> it's a plague well yeah I thought that and too. that guy who was the animal one dropped out oh uh, like well, he left after like two days yeah I saw because but that's because they had the petition right and he had to leave petition no yeah they no, wanted he him he dropped out because he said he still had feelings for his ex yeah but that's not like come on well I've believed him he come looked, on he I'm naive are you he cried <laughs> you know people act for like a living and learn no, to do that on cue just saying but they don't act for a living he's He's just he just owns some land. He's not an actor. Dude, like if ITV were like, hey, we are gonna get so much backlash for this, you need to pretend that this is what's going on. You're gonna Oh, pretend. and they're like, oh, we'll give you some money. He probably got Absolutely. hush money for that for sure. <sighs> not that he needs it, but Who's your fave? Naz. But that's because he's uh. he, I feel like he's a bit like me. He's just been friend zoned by everyone. Aww. But though because he's a joker as well. He's got bad. Yeah. You're friend zoned, yeah. He's he's small there as well. <laughs> um, he's uh He's, small, he's the smallest one as well. Mm. And he's just, he's really funny. But, uh, yeah, he's probably, yeah. What's the new one called? And he's really sexy and everybody likes him. Connor. Oh, yeah, yeah. He is, he is a really good looking guy. Wait, what's this um, whole thing with Connor with a G? Because there's two Connors. There's Connor, which is spelt normally. And then this other guy's got a G in it. Uh, what do you mean? Where's the G? It's like C-O-N-N-A-G-H. Connor. Really? Is he Irish? No, he's not even Irish. Yeah, and I remember one of the girls in there was saying like, "Oh, he looks like Anthony Josh's brother." But like oh no, like he Anthony doesn't. Joshua. Yeah, he doesn't. Wait, this is the sexy one. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't describe him as sexy. Okay, I say he's, a, he's a, <laughs> the attractive looking guy. Yeah. So, have you seen his before and after pictures? No. So he's got some before and after pictures, yeah, and like I swear he looks like a all different person, like. They, there's so many of them that do. Yeah, but his is weird. Like, he looks a whole different race. Like, now nah, he looks like some kind of Mediterranean-ish. Mm-hmm. Like, in these before... And he's got, like, curlyish hair. In his before pictures, he's got, like, bone-straight hair. He's, like, really pale. And, like, he's not basic. Like, he's still, like, built, but not as built. And, um, yeah, a beard is to a man what makeup is to a woman. What? Uh, someone else was telling me that they disagree with this because beard is natural. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of like... Do you see this in the Sidemen video? No, no, I saw oh. someone, else, someone else was telling me about this because they were using a comparison as well. Yeah. I no. don't want to name them, but like... <laughs> this is a, like, your beards are like not... I can still see enough of your face, right? But like an mm. actual beard... Like, I can't do a big beard. The, I find them unhygienic for start. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my God. That's I want nasty. To grow one, but I just nah, can't. You have to like clean that three times a day. Like, You're like you have to like... Oh, the, you have to basically wash the same oil as you wash your hair because basically... Yeah. If you don't like... Not only do like food bacteria and the food particles like end up going into it like there's also if you see there's a percentage of the actual like basically shit that will fly into it over time yeah like, actual shit and i'm just like that's just never happening like with me the beard and makeup thing that's a bit i feel like you can control more of the makeup than you can of the beard like you can obviously shape the beard and like yeah trim it and stuff like that but you can't i'll say i have more like i'm at the edge of like control. stubble and the actual beard i don't actually keep my beard like long or anything like he just can only keep stubble because that's all he can keep. So obviously he has to defend his <laughs> ground here that he can shape his uh, said, said stubble. But but there there is a guy who entered in with the same 
same time as Connor with a G in Love Island. And he's 20 years old, but he looks like fucking 30. He's got like a oh. massive, he's got like a pretty big beard. Wait, the girl, the guy that the Scottish girl was like, super, you know, yeah, the one yeah, that yeah, has a yeah, famous yeah. ex? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm really rooting for them because she's like, I find she some of the girls nice. a bit nutty. Yeah. The way that they act over the men, oh, like, because it's only been a few days like, and they're all like... They have like, twins those, in there, which I was just not For word. those of you yeah. who don't know what nutty means, if this set ever makes the cut, it means basically dodgy people. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I use that term and yeah. a lot of people at work don't get it, so I'm just going to explain Oh, wait, it. what? Nutty it means dodging people. Like dodgy people. I meant right? crazy, oh, like people. nutty, okay. like, you know, like, you say someone's nuts, like, oh. yeah, the girls are like I mean, doesn't everyone nutty. know that what that means, nutty? If someone definitely not nutty. You'd be surprised. Yeah, definitely not. Okay, fair enough. The well, twins wasn't a good idea, you were right. Like, yeah. It's quite funny one of them got kicked out, though. That's, that's I thought funny. the other one was going to go. I was I mean, like, I, with I my friend, I don't what, know which she's going to leave. So. <laughs> yeah, no, you can tell with twins. One of them always has a fatter face with what? identical twins. Okay. It's a thing. But oh, yeah, um, my sisters, yeah, yeah. Have one you got them. identical twin <laughs> sisters? <laughs> they used to be identical. Now they're obviously older. And... They used to be identical. I don't think it works. <laughs> like... No, no. No, because I can show you photos. Yeah. When we were like three, four, five, whatever. Yeah. And they were identical. But so are they show, the, if the same show, egg? If you show them photos now, you, they, they don't look... But are they like the same egg or two different eggs? Oh, I, I, I don't know the technicalities. Because uh, if they're the same egg, they're still identical even if they don't I mean, I grew same. up... We grew up being like, they're identical. That was what I was told. Okay. But now they're not... If I look at them, they're not... They don't look the same. I don't even think you'd... You wouldn't think they look the same, do they? they I can different. see the similarities, but oh, could they... I don't know when. But if I show you but photos. But you're probably used to them. If when I show you're you used to twins. I don't know if I have a photo. I I'm trying you, to think. Like, but, um, the thing is, I don't even see them that much. I don't know why he's looking at me. Like, no, like, well, I mean, you know what, they, <laughs> what do you think happening You here? know what they look like, though. Yeah, but. So. Maybe, maybe. I think it's just a different style than fashion senses that probably make a big difference. Yeah, but Maybe. It might be like. they. I wouldn't I wouldn't have said, guessed they were like, twins until Aaron told me. You know, when I like meet somebody that's a twin, but I only meet one of them, I find it really important that they disclose that they're a twin to me when yeah. I meet them because like, it's kind of like fraud. Yeah. In school, people used to do that when they're dodging things. So there's this twin that joined quite late, but in year 10 and 11, because we had like, let's just say the, not the brightest of like form tutors at the time. Yeah. They would switch places and you couldn't tell. Like at one point, one did question it, like one of the tutors, but... They're like, no, 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 it's still me. But like, she was talking like differently. She talks way different to her actual twin. Uh, so like, um, the, the teacher was confused. And she's like, oh, I'm, I was just getting in my head. Like, and then they switch back the next day. And you could, you usually, you couldn't tell unless you actually knew them or like you saw them often enough. I was just like. Yeah. <laughs> like, I could see how it's easy to get fooled by it. So I'm very like cautious. Like, I don't, I, you could also, I think you can tell when someone's a twin, maybe. Yeah. Like the way like they act may like help you like determine if they have like siblings or like they're a twin actually no they're absolutely i don't think you can tell with some people because like if you turn around in school like twin, me, but not anymore yeah if you turn around to me and I said i was a twin i wouldn't i'd be like oh really but are you i thought no i'm not oh, twin. Okay. but um i don't know i just feel like if someone's a twin they should definitely disclose that to you on first yeah. conversation and be like oh by the way and not saying that it's part of their identity but if i'm like talking to someone if i'm talking to a guy that's a twin mm-hmm. and like i really like him and then like i meet the twin and i think it's him i'm gonna look stupid oh, i've seen that in like tv shows or films, yeah, so like, yeah and i know probably doesn't it obviously happens in real life but like nah you gotta sell somebody up front hey i'm a twin so i lived with this guy at uni and he was like an identical twin but he didn't tell any of us for ages and then like his brother came and they looked exactly the same and it was just so trippy and it was like mm. <laughs> i really wish you'd have told me that you're a twin because this is trippy did you know like that that was did you ever did you have that kind of incident with the twin no, I've never okay. like dated twins, and I don't want to say I, d- I wouldn't, but like <laughs> it's just weird that like there's somebody else that looks exactly the same as my boyfriend. Like that's weird. Are yeah. you attracted to that person? Like you'd be physically attracted yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's like mean, mean. boundaries. And then often as well, they got like similar personalities. Yeah. Like, of course, they won't be exactly the same, but it would be pretty similar. Yeah. When I think of twins, I think of like the Weasley twins from. <laughs> Harry Potter. Mm. That's like the first thing I think of. I guess I'm um, finalizing this and moving on from the final outcome, all the way from Megan and Harry to the final outcome of this episode. We usually have a few final questions that we ask our guests. The first being, one piece of advice to younger you or anyone else. A very good question. Don't think too much. Everything will work out. Every little thing is gonna be. 
Second question is, if you could listen to one song forever, what would it be? Very good question. Um, you can have a few. Can I have an album? Can I have an album? Oh, Midnight Marauders by Tribe Called Quest. Uh, never heard of it. But you don't know Tribe? Tribe, no. Do you know Tribe? What, what's the genre? Um, it's like boom. No, it's not exactly boom back. It's like uh, boom bap. Sorry, it's like it's hip hop basically, but it's like a different, like golden age hip hop. So it's really upbeat. It's not like gangster rap. It's just like core. It's like typical festival music now, I'd say. But um, the album came out in 1993. So you probably weren't born. No, I wasn't. I was born that year, but um, yeah, you weren't alive. So it makes sense. Yeah, we're both youngins. Yeah. Yeah, but you're the only wrong in. Um, the third and <laughs> final question is, what has been your most memorable third wheeling experience? Wait, of today, right? No, no, no. Just, uh, so like, like if could... you've ever third wheeled someone or someone's third wheeled you. Oh, wait, I thought you meant of the podcast. Oh, no. third wheel. <laughs> I don't oh. think you have to rephrase that question because some people have thought that. Like yeah. it's about the podcast. I don't know. I saw that when you sent it to me too. I was like, wait, about the podcast? Yeah, we're not just asking you like what's yeah. so great about <laughs> us. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, wait, do you oh. listen? Yeah, oh, I listen. Wow. My most memorable third wheeling experience, oh, it was awful actually. Um, so I had my own apartment in my third year of uni because I was doing an internship and my friend wanted to stay with me because this guy was like persistently trying to move to her. So um, we got into a taxi and then he kind of just got in the taxi with us. And then I was kind of like, I don't want this guy in my house. But then he was just like super persistent. So like we were all sat in my living room. She didn't want me to go. But I was like, I'm like hardcore third bleeding right now. I just went to my room and they were like sat in the living room. And then 20 minutes later, she came back into the room and she was like, I got really fed up with him. So I told him to go. And then, um, yeah, it's just awkward being in my own home and sitting there. And like, he wants me to go. I want to go, but she didn't want me to go. Got a call out next. So you can call out someone to come on the podcast. Like anybody here or all over the world or... Anybody, anybody in the world. You can have oh. multiple people as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to call out Jack Collins, um, Maria Petriti and Ellie Perfect. Gang, gang, gang. Gang. Yeah, we'll reach, <laughs> reach out to the all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and the final thing is a shout out each. So something we could just link or like, you know, shout out at the end. Um, do you want to go first or do you want to have some time to think? Uh, no, no one actually. I recently purchased a like 21 day fitness challenge from Brittany Babe, who's like a home workouts queen. And um, she's got this hit like category that's like called beast mode and it's actually beast mode. So anybody trying to get ripped or die trying this year should definitely get that. Shit, must check that out. <laughs> um, okay. My shout out is actually going to be for the SVIP program. So um yeah, if applications might be open when you're listening to this, they might not. If they are, and you are a software engineer, and um, yeah, if you're a software engineer and just recently graduated from university, um, I'm not sure if you need to recently graduate or. No, I graduated whatever. four years after. Okay. Um, well, go check them out. Um, get a chance or apply. It's a long process, but it's worth it. Um, get a chance to work in the Bay Area for a year at least. And if you like it, you can probably stay as well. So. Yeah, it's definitely a really good experience and recommend it. So go check them out. Yeah, my shout out is going to be from stemming from the earlier conversation about women in tech. I have a friend who I used to work with, but she now works elsewhere and she blogs about women in tech. So check out her blog. I hope she doesn't mind me calling out. Her name was Tash or Natasha Shafka. And I'll link the blog in the description. And I was want to link a song because that was my initial <laughs> shout out before I, it occurred to me that I could shout out her blog on women in tech. And my shout out for the song is going to be asap rocky goldie and just the album in general long live asap so yeah, that's my whole vibe today so is that what the album's called long live asap yeah it's a dope album yeah thank you deja for coming on thank you for having mm. me cheers for the mugs as well the gifts yeah um, yeah we got some third wheel mugs <laughs> yeah Aaron, i thought the irony of it is that she put us on mugs because her mugs <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe subtly um no thank you for coming on hope everyone's uh, enjoyed listening to the episode we'll speak to you in next week hopefully sweet have a good day okay, see ya bye, bye.